Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to set up general settings for the Events Plus plugin. Uh, first of all, let's go to the Events Plus menu to the left. Then uh, click on General Settings. This will automatically take us to the General Settings section of the plugin. Okay, here we are. Um, in the for the contact section, this is where your company your company information goes. This company information will be displayed in in the in the confirmation emails and uh, all other general information about your company. So um, here, you just write your company name, the address, uh, the primary contact email, and down here you can add the secondary contact emails. This is for when you want other people to be notified. When you have two or three admins uh, managing the events, uh, you can add the extra emails here for people that you want to be notified when somebody registers for an event, somebody pays for an event. Um, you can add the emails here. In the next section, uh, next section is the payment section. Um, here you, ha you can choose the currency format. Uh, keep in mind that um, the currencies are only currencies accepted by PayPal at the moment. So all PayPal currencies are right here. You can choose your currency. Right now we're using the uh, United States dollar for our, our, vi our video, for our video sample. So um, here you have Authorize.net, PayPal, and uh, you have Stripe payments. You can go ahead and turn each of these on or off as you wish. You can use multiple payments if you want to give your uh, customers the option to choose to choose um, more than one payment option during checkout you can do this here so choose the currency we have authorized.net we have it set off uh, PayPal we have it on so right now we have it on sandbox mode add your uh, PayPal email add your PDT uh, authorization token um, you need to go into your PayPal account and, and retrieve this code from your account here are the steps to uh, to retrieve the uh, the authorization token from your PayPal account. Just follow the steps, and you'll be able to uh, retrie retrieve the code easily. Uh, here we have uh, the Stripe payments. We have it uh, activated. Offline pa offline payment is deactivated. For Stripe, you the same. You have to go to your Stripe account and re retrieve your secret key and your publishable key paste this on here and once you have added information um, this payment methods will be available to all customers during checkout uh, for a capture uh, is the same you have to create a Google capture uh, site key go to your Google account and then um, uh, go ahead and, 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 and retrieve the capture key from your Google account paste it on here and you will be able to use CAPTCHA. If you don't add anything here, then CAPTCHA will not work. So make sure you add your uh, Google CAPTCHA site key. For the page config, this is really, really, really important. And uh, you have to make sure that uh, in the main, when, when, the, when the plugin is installed, there's a page called registration that is automatically created. So, uh, over here you have to assign that page in the main registration page so from from the drop down it will all of the pages that you have created will appear including the registration page page that was built by the plugin itself so make sure that um that the uh, page is set to registration here in the drop down otherwise the event links the calendar links and all other register buttons will not work unless you have it set to registration here um, in the in the in the next field, you gotta choose your return URL for payments. This is where this is where customers will return after payments have been made. So uh, you can go ahead and create a thank you page. I have a thank you page created, and uh, just add a simple message in the thank you page, and uh, and uh, 
people will be sent or customers will be sent to this thank you page to read this message and in the next option you have um, choose if you would like to display events in ascending or descending order this is if you want the uh, the events uh, displayed in ascending or descending order. it's self-explanatory uh, social icons choose here if you want the social icons to display in a single event and then down here you have to make sure to add your Google Map a API key. Just click on this and it uh, it will show you the steps to take so you can create a Google Map API key. This is for your Google Maps. It's, it's very important you have to do this. Uh, next we go to the confirmation tab. In the confirmation tab uh, you can choose here if you want to send registration confirmation email. Sometimes you don't want to send uh, confirmation emails to customers then you can choose no. It's up to you. For the email body, you have the settings here. Um, these are all of the shortcodes that you can use, such as uh, the name of the customer, first name, last name, phone, uh, the name of the event, the description, the cost of the event. All of this information can be added onto the email that is sent to the customer. Here's an example of uh, how it should work. You can see here how it's, it is set up. You can copy and paste this if you want. and. Uh, this is the message that the customer will receive uh, here you can choose if you want to send payment confirmation emails keep in mind that this is different the top one is only for registration confirmation and the second one is for payment confirmation so when somebody makes a payment a confirmation email is sent to them with the following information that you can add on here you can type the subject of the email and add the content of the email such as the amount paid uh, the ID, the first name of the customer, last name, the event name, and such. You can uh, create the email here. In the second, in the third option here, do you want to receive email notifications when someone registered? This is if you, the admin, wants want to receive notifications when someone registered. Uh, just go ahead and choose yes, and you automatically be notified when somebody registered. Finally, the last text box here, the final box here. This is for the this is for the, um, the the confirmation page right before the customer goes to pay. When you go through the checkout system, uh, it'll 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 take you to this page where there's a message that you can uh, add to the customer. Thank you for registering. Please make make sure that you uh, you pay so you they become a verified attendee, or you can add your own. Uh, your own message here. Simply leave it at uh, thank you for registering and uh, it will display in the checkout page. Okay let's go to the next tab. Next tab is the wait list. Here's uh, the message that is sent to customers. Once the, once the event is full customers are sent uh, the, the, uh, an email is sent automatically by the plugin to the customers when they, that they are being put in a, on a waiting list. So. Um, here you could go ahead and create a, a copy the example that we already created for you and paste it here. And uh, here basically says thank you first and last name for being interested in our event. At this time all seats for the event have been taken. You've been placed on our waiting list. You can type any message that you want here for the wait list uh, feature. Next is the calendar feature. Here you can choose the time format AM PM, choose the date format if you want the month and uh, day and year, or if you want the day, month, and year in whatever order you want. If you want to play the if you would like to display the amount of seats, start day of the week. Most of this is self-explanatory. Choose this for the date picker, a calendar header, and a current day color. This is this is where you can modify the colors of the of the calendar to match your theme or whatever you, you want to do. Next is the tax. If you want to charge taxes for your events, you can do that here. Uh, you have to use decimal points. Make sure that you don't add percentages here as the system will not detect it. And uh, finally, we're done. That's basically the general settings uh, section of the plugin. It's very important that you fill out all of the information in, in this section. If you don't fill out all of the tabs on the top, you will get an, er an error message. So be sure that you fill out all of the information in this section 
and then uh, it should work smoothly after that so thank you for watching in the in the next uh, video I'm going to show you how to set up the event categories thanks for watching